everybody. Welcome back. Today we have an unboxing of four very cool aircraft here. Four rare aircraft, four used models here. Uh, very exciting. I would say they're all retro, but one of them's not really a retro model. That's okay. Um, I have four sick models to get into today. Uh, all pretty high up there in value, so uh, that's very exciting. Uh, so if I like if I were to resell these, I would get some good resell value. But just having the models in general, uh, that's just more what I'm after. But four models that you can expect to see uh, definitely quite a bit in future airport updates. So that is a very exciting indeed. We'll be beginning the unboxing started here with this Herpa 1400 scale Dodge Connection E1 uh, ERJ 170 E170. Uh, this is in, it says here in the vintage livery, this is in the, uh, um, the, the Delta Flop Wavy Gravy Colors in Motion tail. Um, so, box is already, like, really tiny. It's a Herpa box. It's not as tiny as the Southwest, uh, one that I unboxed in Massive Unboxing 5, I think. But, uh, it is still a pretty tiny box here, as you can see. Um, and it's, like, the size of my hand. It's not the smallest box we'll be getting into today, so just keep that in mind. But it is a just a standard Herpa box, pretty much. You have the aircraft here, 1400, uh, Delta Protection, Sky Team, and all that. Um, you know, all the all the good juicy Herpa stuff. Um, here's the back of it. It is uh, licensed and registered by Delta, which is all which is all good. From Germany, of course, uh, made in China as Herpa is, but uh, yeah, it also has Waffles number here, database number, so we'll get this out of here because we don't really need that, but uh, yeah, this is part of the Waffle Collectibles collection sale, um, I saw it there, and you know, MSP is getting so many E170 and E170, well, they're all E175s now, I guess, uh, but it's still applicable enough for me, I need to, I need more E175s, and like, this is probably going to obsol obsolesce itself pretty quickly once Gemini, if, I should say, Gemini releases a Delta Question U-175. But, until they do, this will be used in MSP updates because I need a ton of U-175s because they're flying so many right now to MSP. It is absolutely insane. So, we'll get this guy out of here. Look at the little guy in the package there. And get them out. So here we go. The Delta Fashion UN75 Delta Flot livery. This is my first aircraft actually in the Delta Flot colors. Uh, or I guess they're supposed to be called colors in motion. Probably shouldn't call them Delta Flot anymore because of, you know, Russia and stuff. So, colors in motion. Uh, so, yeah, let's get the review started here. We have our cockpit windows up here. A large gap. I don't know if this is like a printing error or if that actually was on the aircraft. There's just nothing there because the photo on the box is at the other side of the aircraft. That's a, an unusually large gap. There's just nothing there. So that's a little bit interesting. We have our nose gear down here that are, of course, plastic. Uh, as purple models are, um, they don't put in a ton of detail in there, but that's not super big of a deal. At least the model didn't come broken. We have our L1 boarding door here. We have the Delta Connection titles up here, the old Delta Connection titles. Um, very nice. Uh, and then down here, um, trying to see who this is operated by. Shuttle America, yeah. Uh, operated by Shuttle America, so this is a Shuttle America plane. Um, they flew a ton of these uh, Delta E-175s back in the day, and so that that makes sense. Um, this would be Shuttle America. Um, of course, they don't exist anymore. They're, I believe they're now Republic, so this would now be flying for Republic. But I'll probably use it more for SkyWest. I believe they operate more of the E-175s to, uh, to MSP. But, uh, I mean, they still do have some Republic. We can also still see the Republic uh, RW up there uh, for the registration, which is uh, November. I have to go to the box for eight, or is it 655 
Romeo Whiskey. I'm trying to see if it's on the box here somewhere. I believe I believe it's 655. But it's also really hard to see. <laughs> and no, it's 855. It's either 855 or 655. I believe it's 8. I can't really see it very well. Well, on camera, it looks like an 8, right? Uh, we have also E1 uh, Embraer 170 down here, or just E170 as it's pretty much commonly called today. Uh, the winglet is kind of interesting as it has a blue on the one side, and then it's just gray on the other. We also have our engines, of course, which are tiny on the, on the E170, but I love this aircraft. Um, it's been such a long time since I've gotten an E170 or E175. I believe the last one was the Alaska one back uh, earlier this year. This is pretty interesting. Instead of having a Delta belly, it has the copyright Delta Airlines thing down there and the Herpa logo. Um, you know, it was obviously before the Delta belly was a thing, but uh, I just turned the model like this. And it is kind of a Delta belly. Here are the main gear, which also do not roll, as you know, neither does the nose gear, but that's okay. Like I said, didn't come broken. And then here we have the, uh, the, the tail here. I love that tail. Um, kind of wish Delta Airlines had some retro liveries like American does, and even United does to an extent. Like a Northwest retro livery would be really cool. They kept like one of these around in this livery. That I think that'd be really cool. So Delta, um, if you want to have some cooler liveries, make all the plane spotters at, at MSP at least happy. Um, and I think well, any plane spotter that sees it will be happy. Uh, make a make a retro, make some retro liveries. This is um, the colors of motion. That was that was a pretty cool livery. Um, the of course, I don't know if they'd want to go back to Ron Allen in trim colors, but uh, you know the Delta Spirit colors. Those are they, those they might do retro for. And of course, for Northwest, I'd love to see a Northwest retro so bad. That looks that'd be awesome to see. Um, but you know what? This is this is good good model right here. It will definitely be used in airport updates. I've purchased this more out of necessity than actually like wanting the aircraft, but uh, gotta get Gemini's out at least an even 75. As I said earlier, I would buy a multiple, probably two if they released it. And then uh, we'd have this one just in case we needed it. Oh uh, yeah, that is the first model for the unboxing. We'll move on to the second one. And now we move on to our second American carrier here and our second regional jet. It is the US Airways Express CRJ900 by Gemini Jets. The only Gemini Jet model in this unboxing here. Um, and this one, definitely a retro one. You can see the year here, 2007, my birth year. Pretty fun. Um, we have the uh, US Airways Express uh, as the of course, CRJ900, it's the rendering right there. US Airways Express uh, logo up here, so it's not like the usual Gemini jet box. It's a little bit different. And of course, back then, they did have like this little flag thing on the interior. Um, and then here's the flap with all the uh, all the good information. Rolling rubber tires will test that. I doubt this actually has rolling wheels, which is fine, honestly, because it's a regional jet. I don't really need rolling, rolling tires. Uh, but this will be my earliest CRJ900 model uh, out of all the ones that I have. Um, that's pretty fun. Quite a rare one, too. Of course, US Airways no longer exists, but it will be a nice retro model to have. Oh, we got a little thing that fell out here. Oh, it's the do not push down hard uh, little piece of paper. Man, they still had that. And for the CRJ900, that's quite impressive. But, um, whatever, the plastic thing. And here we go. So, very cool. Yeah, this is my first US Airways model. Um, of course, this aircraft uh, used a lot, of course, by like, guys yeah, like CLT Aviation 13, uh, made it iconic. Um, I know Gemini Jets uh, 333 had one of these. Um, a lot, this is like what you had to get back in the day for US Airways Express. And uh, surprise, surprise, the landing gear do roll. Not very well. 
but they do roll. I wouldn't suggest rolling them though for this because that nose gear looks like it's about to pop off at any second. So I'm not going to do that anymore, but they do roll. So I guess they didn't lie about that. Uh, so congratulations, 2007 Gemini Jets. But we'll get into the review of the aircraft. We'll get it centered on the screen first. Actually, we can zoom in here. So we have our cockpit windows, of course, a little escape uh, hatch up there. This is the Star Lance logo. And then uh, down there, we have the main gear. And here we have the L1 boarding door and operated by Mesa Airlines. So this will be applicable for if I need... I already have a Mesa Sierra 900, but let's just say for some reason I need two Mesa Sierra 900s for United Airlines because they just got these. Um, I, I could probably use this model and it'd still be applicable enough at least. I mean, CLT Aviation used these for many years to represent American Eagle Sierra 900, so I should be allowed to use them for United. <laughs> Although... Um, they don't fly the Sierra 900, Mesa Sierra 900 to any airports that I need yet. But maybe if I needed, like, because I don't have a, I don't have an American Eagle Sierra 900 yet. So maybe I can use this, like, for a PSA operated American Eagle Sierra 900. I don't know really what use I'd have for this one yet. I mean, I'll probably come up with one at some point. Um, and then, of course, retro airport updates. This will be used in plenty of retro airport updates. But uh, in terms of modern day updates, it's subbing in for another airline i'm not really sure here we have the u.s airways express titles up above uh, we have probably a little bit of first class section or at least upgraded section up there and then the rest would be economy uh, we have our overwing exits here and the exit paths uh, there's a little bit of paint chipping here on the winglet as you can see it's kind of blurry because i'm zoomed in way i'm zoomed in a lot i don't know why i said zoomed in way zoomed way in maybe i should let me zoom out here for a second. Get my bearings with me. Um, the paint chip isn't bad or anything. It's not going to take away the value from this aircraft. You can kind of see it there for a second. Uh, but yeah, there's a little bit of paint chip. A little bit of paint chipping on the winglet. But nothing serious that doesn't really matter. Moving further back, we have our stripes that, uh, of course, move up into the tail section. We have our American flag, Restoration November 912 Foxtrot Juliet. You can see that one well. <laughs> we have our engines back here. And then, of course, the U.S. Airways tail looks very nice on the CRJs. Um, I think any tail looks nice. I think any airline logo, tail, anything looks nice with the T-tail on it. I love the T-tails. They won't be around for much longer, but... Well, maybe they might make a comeback with, you know, the the new... Uh, whatever it's called. The, the the new GE engines with... That are, like, ridiculous bypass ratio. Um, I forgot what it's called. But those might be used on the uh, on T-tail aircraft. But, uh, yeah. Here you can see the, the, the nose here does have this little little pin here. I guess that allows it to roll, but it doesn't make it look super realistic. Um, but you're not going to notice that on camera anyways if I'm just having this positioned at a gate or something. Um, that is a little bit of an interesting quirk about this model. Um, I don't think rolling gears were that important. I'm surprised it was that important to Gemini back in the day, um, because it seems like it is now at least, but uh, I don't know if my... I, I can't remember if my CRJ 900s... I think the, the, the main gears roll on my modern CRJ 900s, um, but the nose gear doesn't. And speaking of landing gear, this one does have the landing gears positioned correctly because they could do that correctly back in 2007. Why they couldn't do that in 2021 is beyond me, but Gemini Jets being quirky. And then we have our uh, stand hole and the main gear here and then the wheel well. Um, and of course also the, that is correct. <laughs> so, um, horizontal stabilizers, whatever. Uh, but yeah, this, this is a good mold here. <laughs> um, I wish I could have made the Delta Connections here during 100 look like this, but that's okay. Gemini did a good job on this one. And, uh, yeah, this will be used some point in the future, I'm sure. It'll be at least a nice display piece until I can find a good use for this one. But I'm sure 
there'll be some uh, they'll appear at some point along the way but it was a good model to get my first u.s airways model and a very good one indeed two models left here both of these are latvian models uh well not in terms of the manufacturer the, the turpa and jc wings but uh in terms of the airline at least it is a latvian and of course as there is only one latvian airline that is air baltic that is what those are the models are that was horrible grammar but we have the herpa 1400 scale air baltic uh this is before i was eight to twenty bombardier cs 300 so um this is air baltics like not old livery but their earlier livery um this is what the first AG 20s got painted with. Then they applied the newer livery. The new livery has uh, the green. Well, we should probably, I'll, I'll explain it when we get the model out of the box. But it is a standard Herpa box. Nothing too special about it. Um, and here we have the aircraft, the digital rendering there. And then on the back, you know, all, all the stuff. Nothing too extraordinary about it. If you've seen a Herpa box, it looks the same as any other Herpa box. It just like one 400, so one 500. They do mostly one 500 stuff. Ooh, we got another stand with this one, because I broke my other stand uh, for the other Air Baltic AG20. Not that I really care, because I'm not going to be displaying these on a stand anytime soon. But, if I did want to, we do have a stand with this. And I failed when I when I first unboxed uh, the Air Baltic A220 on the uh, on the airplane uh, going to Florida. I unboxed the, the Air Baltic, my first Air Baltic, no, my second Air Baltic A220, the first one that I got in the regular livery. Um, you can go back; that was about two months ago, I think. Um, but uh, that one came with a stand, and I struggled with putting the aircraft on it because I was filming with one hand and trying to unbox with the other. That didn't really work. But we have a new stand. This one should hopefully be better than the other one uh, because this one's not broken for now. These are kind of easy to bend the plastic on, though, so I'd be careful with that. It is kind of cool because this is just like completely see-through uh, plastic right here. So like you can see the gate and everything. And, of course, Air Baltic Bombardier CS300 on 400 scale. But enough with the stand. That's not the interesting part. The interesting part is what's inside this plastic. And that is, of course, the Herpa 1400 scale Air Baltic A220 in their I don't know what I don't know what to call its livery. Their pre-2019 livery, I guess. Post-20 13, 15, something like that. I, I don't know when this livery like officially came about, um, but they've had this one for a while. This is, of course, like the, I guess it wasn't like the original Air Baltic white and green livery, as that one had uh, airbaltic.com up above the windows, but the tail was still the same. This is just basically Air Baltic turning their titles into billboard titles, uh, like what a lot of airlines are doing right now. So this is, I guess, Air Baltic's original Euro white, <laughs> official Euro white, um, even though it wasn't really. They've always had a m m mostly white livery, um, but this is Euro white, clearly. So why not get started with the uh, review here? This is really nice. Uh, this is a quite a rare model too. Um, you can still find some of the 100 A220 aircraft, but this one. Uh, before they added the the green stripe, what the new livery is, is it just has this, the green tail continues down the fuselage here. And of course this one doesn't have that. And uh, this version is a lot more rare than, than the other one. So, um, well yeah, let's get it started here. We have the cockpit windows and the escape hatch up here. It's Air Baltic something, I can't read what that says. Air, well, Air Baltic Bombardier CS300. We also have, of course, our plastic nose gear. Kind of crazy that half the models in here are Herpa models, as I don't have a lot of Herpa, but adding to the collection here, plastic nose gear. And then we have our 
Elm Boring Door here. Air Baltic billboard tiles, looking very nice. Then we have the engines with Air Baltic, uh, and then on the other side, the Air Baltic logo is angled upward. Uh, this is something that you could see uh, when I did my videos uh, flying Air flying on Air Baltic, and the trip report and everything. Uh, maybe not on the trip report because I was seated like right here, but it was pretty awesome to look straight into the engine. But on the uh, the other flight, on the return flight coming back from Latvia, we were seated like right next to the engine, so got that nice branding right there for <laughs> Air Baltic. Um, we have our oval ring exit right here, and then the exit paths moving down the wings. And then we have Air Baltic winglet right there. It just says Air Baltic on it. It's not going to focus very well, I don't think. But it just says Air Baltic on both sides. It's the same design winglet on, uh, on both sides. It just has the Air Baltic logo. We do have aerials on this aircraft, which is pretty nice to see. We have the three antennae up here, and then one on the bottom. And then we have the uh, EU flag, Latvian flag, which honestly on these Air Baltic planes looks more like the Austrian flag, but it's beyond me. Also, Gemini designed their uh, Latvia 100 anniversary livery. The, the color makes it look like it's the Austrian flag and not the, and not the Latvian flag, but I digress. Uh, we have the registration, uh, Yankee Lima and Charlie Sierra Alpha. So I believe that makes it, this one the first uh, CS300 that they, that they got. This is before it was the A220, but I'll probably still just call it the A220 anyways. Um, but yeah, this was, this was before, they, uh, before Airbus stepped in and saved the program. So this might have been the first uh, CS300 to fly in the world because Air Baltic was the launch customer. So I believe this is the first one which is quite interesting. Um, I can do some research on that to, to make sure, but I believe that's the case. Then we just have the green tail with Baltic on there. Uh, yeah, so that's that's pretty much it. We also have the, our main gears down here. Do not roll as no, I'm doing the Herpa models. Air Baltic belly. Um, a lot of airlines are going after the Delta belly thing. I don't think Delta was the airline that originated it, but a lot of airlines have that, and uh, Air Baltic is among them. With the Air Baltic belly, we also have the stand hole down there, and uh, the Herpa logo. So uh, let's see if we can try to get the stand on the aircraft successfully this time. Because um, I struggle with doing this on the actual airplane. When I filmed the original uh, unboxing for, well not the original unboxing, but the unboxing for the other one. As you can see, it fits on the stand very well. Although I will not be keeping it on the stand, but uh, that's what it looked like on the stand. Uh, my, I'm getting this for my Riga Airport project. Uh, I expect the first update to come out very soon, maybe even tomorrow, uh, depending on how my upload schedule works out. I don't do that stuff in advance. I just decide what I want to post the night before, basically, and. Um, do all the editing and stuff. It's the logistics of being a YouTuber. I don't have any set schedule, which maybe I should, but I don't. <laughs> you know, I just noticed something on the on the US Airways Express. If we just go back here for a second, I didn't even notice this when I first unboxed it. But this is something that they don't have on the Sierra 900s anymore. There's a door in the back, another exit door. They don't have those anymore. That is that's crazy. I, I never noticed that. That's really interesting. Um, so a cool little quirk there by U.S. Airways. I guess they were mandated to put in a, another door because the capacity was too high or something. I'm not really sure, but I guess the FAA was like, hey, you got to put in another door there. So I'm guessing that's how the conversation went as well. Uh, the FAA just entered the U.S. Airways Express or Mesa Airlines headquarters or something. and was like, hey, put another door on your Sierra 900. That's what they said, exactly. Continuing with the Air Baltic theme, as we have two Air Baltic models today. This one is probably the rare of the two. I'm not 100% sure, because that model is also pretty rare. This one, probably even rarer. This is the retro Air Baltic model, I guess. And that is the Air Baltic Fokker 50 here. And this is in a special livery celebrating 49 Euro flights to Berlin and Hamburg in Germany. So uh, yeah, this is all of JC Wings. I look at this logo here. I don't even think JC Wings puts their logo in their boxes anymore. Um, although I don't get too many JC Wings models, anyways. But look at that. Look at that logo. 
Look at that horrible contrast. They did a horrible job. But it's a cool box. Uh, other than the back, which with that horrible contrast, we have the aircraft right there. Uh, it, I'm assuming it didn't come with the tissue. Uh, I guess that was just added later. later. This is, as I said, these are all used. You have a little sticker there uh, with this is a J C Wings or Baltic uh, Fokker F50 on 400 scale. We have the Fokker logo up here, which is pretty pretty cool. And then Fokker 50 scale on 400. I'm not monetized yet, but if I were, this video would probably be demonetized because how many times I'm saying Fokker Swiss has to Swiss 001 has to uh, change it. Whenever he's talking about a Falker plane, uh, has to change it to a Falker. I'm not going to do that, though, because it doesn't matter. Uh, this is very hard to open. There we go. It's more difficult than I expected to, to get this thing open, but there we go. Got the thing open. Also, this is a very tiny model. I don't want to like damage it or anything. Cause look at how tiny this little plastic is. This box is teeny tiny. Um, we have our tissue there, we'll get that out, and we'll get the model in frame. We'll get that out of here as well. Surprisingly, this popped up on eBay like twice in one week. Of course, I got the, the first one, I paid like $70 for this thing, which is pretty crazy. Um, but wow, the landing gear roll, that's quite impressive. And the blades, the blades also spin. Very nice. JC Wings did a great job on this one. I can already, I can already tell. Um, so yeah, good job, JC Wings. But uh, I guess we'll get into the review of the aircraft right here. Uh, we have our cockpit windows. Let's set it down for now. We'll go over the livery in a bit. But we have our cockpit windows. Ellen boarding door, which is on the beak of whatever that bird is. I'm not even sure why that's on the airplane in the first place. But that's a very interesting design there, Air Baltic. I, I'm not sure what that is, but... Uh, Good for you, I guess. We have our nose gear, which is so tiny, and yet it barely rolls. Um, not surprising, but I think it technically, I think it's supposed to roll, but I don't think it rolls very well because it's so tiny, which is fine. I don't need it to roll. It's not a big deal. There's the bird, fun bird, bird vibes. We have our wing here. It's a very long wing, a very, very long wing. I don't know how else to describe it, but that's the first adjective that comes to mind. Uh, we have our, kind of like the, the Q400, which Air Baltic did have many Q400s for a while, and they just flew off their last one. They've retired them since, I think, 2020, but they just flew off their last one to someone else, I guess. I'm not sure who it was going to. I forgot where it was going to, but uh, yeah, no more, no more Q400s. Uh, in Riga, unfortunately. They had a park there for a while. Maybe they still have a few parked, but they don't have them. Well, obviously, they're not flying anymore for Air Baltic. But we have our main gear, and also the engines have the old Air Baltic logo. This is what it used to look like, uh, of course, compared to the, the modern one. Very different. And also before Air Baltic developed their whole green sustainability uh, livery, which they now have uh, <laughs> they are they, i mean they are the greenest airline in all of europe uh and the youngest airline in all of europe i guess so that their average age in their fleet is like 2.5 years or something like that it's ridiculously young um of course it's all h20s so of course it's gonna be very green uh latvia strives to be, strives to be a very green country and air baltic is the world's or at least europe's greenest airline yeah, yeah, the Air Baltic logo right there, as I demonstrated earlier, the props do spin, which is a very nice feature. I did not expect them to do that, but uh, JC Wings did a great job there. Uh, I'm going to just try to read what this says. It's kind of being blocked by the landing gear, but we have... What does that say? One-way ticket from Berlin and Hamburg to Riga for uh, 49 euro. With a with a, with an asterisk, <laughs> but yeah, that's a really good price uh, to fly from Latvia to Germany. Um, that's pretty impressive, actually. Oh, and then on this side, oh, this is actually kind of cool. 
I didn't know it was going to be like this. I thought it was just going to be both sides that had the special livery. But no, on this side, it's just the standard Air Baltic livery. That's even better, actually, because now we get both the special livery on this side, uh, and then we have the regular livery on this side. I didn't expect it to do that, so that's pretty cool. Um, and then uh, this side, it technically does have a registration here, but it's kind of being blocked out by the special livery, so we'll do it on the other by the 49, I should say. So we'll do it on the other side. But we do have the, the door there and no underwing exit doors. We have a stand hole though, so I could put this on a stand. Uh, and then here is the, this is what the tail used to look like, which is honestly really cool. I think this is probably better than their, than their new livery. I think their new logo is better, but I think this is a really cool design. I do have some t-shirts with that design. So that's really, that's really fun. I like this old livery by Air Baltic. Uh, I kind of miss it. Yeah, this is this is what the regular livery would look like, um, which is the Air Baltic logo down there, the old one with the B being cool and rhombusy. Um, we have well, here's where our luggage door is um, on the back there. I'm not sure what this cutout does. I'm assuming that's just another door or something. I'm not quite sure, but uh, oh, it also says something up here. What does this say? Oh, well connected with SAS, yeah. They had a good partnership, and they still do have a good par partnership with SAS. Depending on your definition, Latvia is or is not a Scandinavian country. Um, it's in the area. I wouldn't really, I mean, it's kind of a Scandinavian country. It's kind of not at the same time. Um, flag doesn't have the Nordic cross, of course, so. That should be a defining feature, but then again, Iceland has the Nordic Cross, and they're not a Scandinavian country, at least not in my definition. But here we have the registration, Yankee Lima, uh, Bravo Alpha Tango, and then, once again, the tail. So, yeah, that's it's probably the coolest model in this unboxing. Yeah, this is worth this is definitely worth $70 now. It's tiny, it's, it's smaller than my pinky, but... Yeah, this is really cool. This is a really cool model. I didn't even expect it to be this good. But yeah, this is really nice. This will definitely, even though it's retro, it will still be used in modern day Riga updates just because there aren't many Air Baltic planes that were ever made um, in 400 scale. And actually, I have all but one. So I just need to get the Estonia, the JC Wings Estonia uh, livery. Then I'll have every single Air Baltic plane that has ever been made in 400 scale. So that is obviously the, the, the goal for uh planes to get here and i will still be collecting for my uh riga airport uh because it's I mean, i'm gonna start doing videos for it now and i think i have enough aircraft to do it for air baltics ryanair lufthansa and we'll still grow with the other airlines that they that operate there but yeah these are the aircraft uh all four all lined up here so we have the U.S. Airways Express CRJ900, Delta Connection E-175, E-170, E-170, Air Baltic uh, CS300 here, or A220-300 in their old Dura livery, but it's still used currently. And then the Fokker 50 in the old livery. All very nice models here, and will definitely be used a lot in uh, future airport updates, especially these two, and probably this one quite a bit as well. So uh, you'll see them then. Uh, and I will see you tomorrow. As always, good night. I'll feed us in.